All right, welcome back. In this next talk, we're going to talk about the evolution of horses and donkeys and, and zebras and the other equids. So if we look at evolution, you know, here's the definition. You know, you're looking at the change in genetics over, over long periods of time. This, this is something that happens, you know, naturally, relatively slowly. And as we'll see in, in, in this lecture, over 55 million years is how we can, we can go back and trace back to the earliest relatives of the horse. Now, we could speed this up a little bit with, you know, natural or, excuse me, artificial selection with breeding. So we do that with modern day breeding. We can actually speed evolution up. You know, we can breed for, for better genetics and do this quicker. Now, obviously, you know, the theory of evolution or natural selection is, dates back to, to Darwin. And the reason I bring this up is because the horse or the equid is really the model species for evolution. This is a species that we have more bones that show changes over time than almost any other species that we've found on Earth uh, to date. So this is why, you know, we always go to the horse as the model, as we'll see in, the, in this lecture. And, you know, again, we can trace this back, this, these changes over time, over 55 million years, where Eohippus, the very first horse, you know, looks like a small dog to where we get actually our tall, even our giraffe breeds today are really tall horses. And the two, the two parts of the skeleton that really we can, we can point to this is the dramatic changes in toes in the lower leg, the changes in the lower leg, and then also in their teeth. You know, as their diets changed over time, their teeth changed with it. Now, here's one of the earlier papers. There is a whole host of papers that were, you know, the early 20th century when, you know, Darwin in the, in the 19th century proposed his theory of evolution. Scientists were rushing to find supportive evidence, and this is where they, they really started pointing to the horse, you know, and can see these, these changes in the bone. So here was a paper, here's a, a, a nice picture taken by this page, paper published in 1926 by Matthew, and you can see the, the, the Eocene, you know, as it goes up to today's modern horse, and it's showing you the, the skull and the lower legs. And really the, the thing that we're going to notice is, you know, as this horse goes from four, four toes to one toe to, to the hoof today. So looking at that, you know, the Eohippus or Hierocotherium right there, as you can see, you know, was a four-toed animal. And then over time it went to three toes. And then those toes started to migrate up the leg to one toe. And you can see that in the bottom picture. So the top picture is actually a modern horse or equid, you know, zebra donkey. That's what their lower leg looks like. And you'll see the, the splint bones were remnants of the toes that their earlier relatives had. So we can, you know, see the evidence, direct evidence in our modern day horses. Now, here's a good graph, you know, obviously if you go online and Google a lot of this or, or search for a lot of this, you, you can find different images of horse evolution, but I always like this one because it shows the, the lower leg and kind of what the animal would look like over time or an artist guess over time in the phylogenetic tree, you know, the, the changes going from, you know, earlier to today. So we're just going to kind of take some snapshots in here, you know, we don't have time to go through obviously every, every layer of this. So we'll start at the beginning and we've already talked about Eohippus and the other name that it's known as is the Dawn Horse. And again, here's what it may look like with the stripe patterns or trying to take a guess. You know, this was more of a browser type animal, probably ate lots of leaves and small plants and shrubs. So they were made for that. They were made for little forest regions and, and that's why they're toes and they could climb and, and do other things. So they were relatively short, you know, 20 inches at the shoulder or 50 centimeters, and they had four toes on the front, three toes on the back, and they only had three grinding molars, okay? So like they weren't heavy grazers like our horses today. So again, that's where they think they were browsers and ate more leaves and small plants. Now, if we jump, you know, 15 to 20 million years, we can jump and see the mesohippus. And so this was roughly, you know, they evolved about 40 million years ago. And what's unique about this jump is they went from four to three toes. So this is where we start seeing evidence of that, that fourth digit disappearing and going up the leg on those earlier uh, equids, or well, they're really not equids at this point, the earlier uh, species from Eohippus to Mesohippus. 
And you can see they're not that much taller, so they're getting a little bit taller, but what's also interesting about this is they went from three grinding teeth to six grinding teeth. So obviously some, there are some dietary changes driving this evolution where you know, they had to kind of evolve more of a, as they, they evolved a more grass-based diet, their teeth changed with them so they can handle that eating constant grass, grinding it down and eating it. So, so from that browse diet to more of a uh, grazing diet. Now we're gonna jump ahead you know, pretty far again and this is where we get to Dinohippus which is where we start seeing evidence of a single toed horse. You know, they're going from those three toes to that one toe or one hoof. So that's where we start to see first evidence and this is about 12 million years ago. So they kind of look like equus, which is the, the forerunner of, of today's modern equids. And you can see from this, this uh, image here, you can look at the, uh, the, the lower leg on this, and you can still see you know, just that hoof, and then those two toes are just kind of remnants. So maybe a little supportive, maybe not, but really they're, they're getting used to a one toe. And then again, those teeth, you know, here, you can see those teeth are starting to be grinders where they're gonna start grinding. And, you know, again, as, as their diets changed, you know, they, their, their lower legs start to evolve so they could get faster and could outrun predators. And that's what's driving this development in this species. Now we're gonna jump ahead to equus. So the equus is actually the, the forerunner for today's donkeys, zebras, and horses. So they all trace back to equus. And so that's where we get that, that family name. And they evolved about five million years ago and they died out about a million years ago. And these were animals that were found all over the world except Australia. Okay, so the, what's really surprising about this slide is horses or equus evolved in North America. So that's where we find all the bones. All the, all the records are actually in, in North America and it mostly in the United States, some in Canada, some in Mexico. So you can see about 55, 58 million years ago, that's where Eohippus was evolving. And then 20 million years ago, as, as they evolved, they spread out in North America. And then roughly, they, they think about 10 million years ago uh, and onward, Equus started to migrate you know, throughout the rest of the world. So it went over this, this land bridge that's been recognized between you know, Siberia and the United States of Alaska that you know, not only did early man come over a similar land bridge, but horses actually migrated out, or equus migrated out um, from there. And then they spread out throughout Asia and Europe and, and then evolved, obviously, equus cabalis and equus uh, asinus, and then the zebras also evolved from those early horses. But what's also interesting, about 10,000 years ago, the horses completely disappeared from North America and, and South America and, and Central America. You couldn't, you couldn't find them anymore. And this kind of you know, coincides with, with dying out of some other megafauna, such as you know, the mammoth and the woolly rhino and some of those others. So it could have been a change in climate you know, with some overhunting. Their food could have been dwindling. So their scientists aren't quite clear on, on what drove them to extinction out of the Americas. But they didn't come back until the 15th, or actually the 16th century, the 1500s, when the Spanish came and the conquistadors were, you know, venturing through Central, South, and, and North America, and some horses got away from them, and that's where they established the wild populations that we see today. Now, the final slide of this presentation is the, the, the two relatives from horses, and this surprises a lot of people. It, it, it's pretty neat. And that is the rhinoceros and the taper. Those are the, the horse's two closest relatives, and we can actually trace them back to that early ancestor there, you can see on the slide. So, so they're all pretty similar um, with a rhino and a taper and a horse. It, 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 it's pretty, pretty funny and pretty neat. So one thing you can do, you know, in the United States, there's, there's still some debate about evolution when they're, you know, there's a lot of evidence pointing to evolution being fact. So if you, know, if you want, you can go in the discussion board and kind of talk about this further and how horses support the idea of evolution. I mean, the evidence is there in the soil. We can see the changes in the bones. You know, I think it would be an, an interesting uh, discussion to read. And then in the next lecture, we're going to talk about you know, how horses have played a role in, in our own evolution and development.